Tonight on Haunted Homes, we investigate reports of a haunting in Northfield, Birmingham. I am petrified. A family too terrified to live in their home. She actually woke me up screaming. There was this dark, shadowy thing. His face looks like it's really badly decomposed. Can somebody go to the back bedroom, please? Can somebody? Back bedroom, back bedroom. He's not feeling very well. Can Mia Dolan, one of Britain's most sought-after psychics, help the Scrivens? He can't really hurt you, just frighten you. He's coming down the stairs. home alone tonight. Frightened? Do you sleep with the light on? Well, if you do, it seems that you might have good reason to do so, because an incredible one in three of us Brits believes that at one point or another in our lives, we've actually lived with a ghost, be that a hell-raising poltergeist, a sinister phantom, or even a so-called friendly ghost that we more or less treat like a member of the family. Tonight, we visit an ordinary three-bedroom home in Birmingham, except for the family who live there, life is anything but ordinary. And that's because they believe they're being stalked by a dark spectre. Divorced mum Lorraine lives with her daughter Emma, a 21-year-old administrator, and son Stephen, a 20-year-old security guard. They live in a quiet suburban street in Northfield. We've lived here now not just over 19 years. Progressively over the last four years, the house hasn't been a very nice house to live in. Unable to work due to ill health, Lorraine spends much of the day alone in the house, often claiming to see shadows and hear footsteps. You just see a shadow as if it was somebody coming down the stairs, and sometimes you go to shout to put the kettle on for you, and there was nobody there. Lorraine, normally a capable woman, is feeling more and more vulnerable in her own home. It sent shivers down my spine, and I, I really did feel nervous actually being in the house and didn't let on to the children. This sense of presence that Lorraine feels constantly disturbs her sleep. I can actually get woken up in the middle of the night. You get, um, like, a very soft blowing on your face as if somebody's breathing on you, but when you actually wake up, there's nothing there at all. The distress continued for Lorraine. I woke up thinking that we were having another earthquake or something because the bed was shaking slightly. When I actually sat up in bed and looked, there was a small section in my wardrobe that the clothes were swinging in and out of the wardrobe. If the window was open, they'd blow sort of across the wardrobe. These were definitely swinging in and out of the wardrobe. I actually sat up in bed and watched it, and it was going on for a good five minutes. To actually sit there and watch the clothes swing, it was a really eerie feeling, especially as I was on my own. The family say they're being tormented by this presence. From a young age, Stephen claims he's been terrorised in the back bedroom. I used to have horrendous nightmares. Uh, it was quite vivid dreams. It used to get to the point where I was going to freeze fright and I was quite, quite scared and couldn't move. I was shouting, but no words were coming out. It wasn't long after that that they actually swapped bedrooms and it became Emma's room. The back bedroom seems to be a major source of paranormal activity. Emma has suffered but coped until recently. About eight weeks ago, she actually woke me up screaming. It was as if there was somebody standing next to my bed. It was a man. His face looks like... The only way I can describe it is if it's like... if somebody's been rotting or it's really badly decomposed. There's no way I'm going back in that bedroom. Close family friend Steve also claims to have witnessed something sinister. Well, I thought I'd seen the door open and the, like a shadow, and all the air stood up on my back, and I had a full rash all over my butter. They say the spirit hasn't just scared them, he's even physically attacked them. Lorraine believes she was pushed down the stairs by an invisible force. I'd started decorating, and to do the hallway, you have to have the two ladders and a plank going across to reach. I was just actually putting the last piece of paper up, and 
it was as if the ladder just was like vibrated slightly and then the next thing I remember being at the bottom of the stairs. Lorraine says her shoulder was badly injured and has caused her years of pain. I sort of sat there thinking, well, how did that happen? I'd been up and down that ladder onto the plank so many times that day and everything was fine. It was sturdy as far as I was concerned. The family have felt this haunting presence more and more. Two weeks ago, Stephen made a very specific discovery. Um, I was just going around taking different photos of different places. Um, I then took a photo of the dining room from here, and then after I took the photo, I noticed on the actual picture that there was something odd in the mirror. Stephen is sure he has photographic evidence of a sinister figure. I zoomed in on the image, and this is the object that I've seen in the corner of the mirror. It was this dark, shadowy thing. That's when it sort of began to hit home that maybe there is something in the house, maybe it is something real. I think the person in the uh, standing next to my bed and the figure in the photograph could be the same thing, yes. We gave the Scrivens a camera to try to record their spirit stalker. Emma is too nervous to stay in the house and has gone to her boyfriend's for the night. I've just sat down to do this video diary and I heard the strangest noise coming through the headphones. The more that gets towards the door, it seems to get a bit louder. In an attempt to discover what the noise is, they switch the lights out and investigate further in the dark. And the noise, it's just like a growling, like gurgling sort of thing. Maybe it's trying to communicate with us, but what does it really want? The voice they've claimed to have heard tonight is the final straw. They feel there's nowhere left to hide. This phantom man is driving them out. I'm really desperate to get this sorted. Seeing the actual black figure, and it's more sinister evil looking, it's really unnerved me. Lorraine Scriven and her children Emma and Stephen say they feel like they're living in a real-life horror film. They are desperate for help. Lorraine says she's terrified after her son took a photograph in the family's home that revealed a sinister dark shape in a mirror. And Emma won't sleep in her own bedroom. She's convinced she saw that same dark shape standing just inches from her. They've called in the Haunted Homes team to find out who or what that alarming figure could be. Mia Dolan, one of Britain's most sought-after psychics, heads up the team. A psychic is somebody who covers all areas of the paranormal. It's a paranormal consultant. There is no area that I don't work or don't touch on. I work with missing people. I work with people who are bereaved, people who are scared. It even goes into commercial work involving the hiring of people in key personnel places. I get so many calls and people think they've got hauntings. Probably 70 to 80% haven't got a ghost. And then just occasionally, you get a live one. You shouldn't be scared of ghosts. Be cautious. But if it's a bad ghost, they can infect you. They can break you down, they can make you ill. You need help. Some of the activity that indicates you've got a haunting is extreme temperature changes. Smells that come from nowhere, overpowering, and then go again lights and orbs that have no logical explanation, bangs and noises that don't make sense. And, of course, if you see a ghost in the room. People say to me, oh, I think it's haunted, but if it's a child, I'll keep it because I'm not scared of a child, or I'm not scared if it's not a bad one. It's not a dog. And if somebody is stuck on Earth, they need to go home. So, no, you cannot live with a ghost. They are not part of the furniture and fittings. If Mia decides that a home is haunted, she'll attempt to remove the ghost through a clearing process. My job is to pull the spirit in. I act as if like a magnet, so I drag it to me and hold it. It's actually my guide that takes it over. A guide is a guardian angel or whatever name you want to give it, everyone's got one. Mine's called Eric. It's Eric that opens a door to the other side. One of the techniques Mia uses is a spiritual practice called psychometry. Psychometry is picking up 
information from objects. If somebody's held something a lot, or used something, or worn something, then that's going to, it's going to soak up the vibe anyway. Mia studies the family's most cherished belongings to get more information about the owners. It's a great way to get a feel of a property you're going to. It's like the first clues. OK, I want to do some psychometry with these objects. Now, I've not seen them before. Let's start with the chain. This has belonged to two women. With the first woman, it was given as a celebration of relationship. But that was a long time ago. A younger member of the family, another female, received this and keeps it. But it doesn't seem to be worn so much now. Probably more of a keepsake. There's nice feelings in that. Now, this photograph of this lady, she's not here anymore. She's in spirit. And she visits, this lady visits the family. She is not the cause of the haunting. She's, she's just a nice, lovely extra. Psychic Mia Dolan claims that she can detect paranormal activity. A supernatural presence, she says, can make her feel off balance, and sometimes even sick. On examining the family's belongings, Mia says she's picked up on the fact that the children's deceased grandmother often visits their house to check up on them. Mia is intrigued by the objects and says she now wants to visit the family's home to find out if a more threatening ghost is responsible for the haunting. Mia has driven to the family's home, but apart from the psychometry, she has no prior knowledge of the Scrivens, their house, or even its location. As she approaches the family's home, she says that she's starting to get a sense of something unpleasant. Oh, straight away it's like oppressive. It's heavy. Even though the house is a relatively new suburban home, it could still be harboring a spirit. We've got balls of light been going on in here. Orbs, lights, noises upstairs. This is not the centre of it. Very interested in the stairs. The stairs are very important in this house to do with the phenomena. It's just the presence is here, and I always know when I'm right near it because my heart rate goes up, and it's like a physical feeling of anxiety without feeling fear. It's a man. It's heavy. I wouldn't say evil, I'd just say heavy. But it certainly uses these stairs a lot. After only a few minutes in the house, she believes she's identified an intimidating male presence. One of the people sharing this bed has been very scared. The other person hasn't seen something, heard something, frightened life out of them, but the other person didn't, and they're both there together. We've got movement on the bed, but more the blankets this time rather than the bed. It's not the centre of it, it's just a spillover. Now, this room, it's all still centering out there. It's probably laying in bed, they can see the stairs. Mia says there's been a frightening presence in this room. Activity to heat at the bottom of the bed, so some they're getting a visitor at the end of the bed. This means that whatever's in this house is taking great pleasure going from room to room, bedroom to bedroom. Scaring people. There's also a lot of electrical disturbances up here, like televisions, lights. And this could be the actual physical lights from the ceiling, or it could be light anomalies. We'll have to wait till later to find out. Mia believes she's picked up on some strong psychic activity. But what will our other experts make of the house? Mia is accompanied by our very own paranormal investigator, Mark Webb. I became a paranormal investigator back in 1996, and over nine years, my fascination hasn't dwindled at all. Paranormal investigators will go to reputedly haunted locations and try to capture some form of proof of the existence of the paranormal. Skeptic Chris French, professor of paranormal psychology, will look for a rational explanation. I actually used to be a believer in the paranormal, quite a strong believer. 
And over the years, the reason I've become more skeptical is because I've learned more and more about human psychology and the ways in which we can actually fool ourselves, the way we misremember, the way that we all tend to perceive things the way we want them to be. And it's as I've come to appreciate the way that that operates that I think that that provides probably a better explanation for allegedly paranormal activity. Our experts will be involved in a vigil at the family's home. In this, Mark will use various techniques to detect the presence of a spirit. On a paranormal investigation, we tend to do all different experiments. We'll use trigger objects, which are items which we will place onto a piece of paper. We draw around them. Obviously, it's in a room that's locked. No one else is allowed in there. And if we get any movement from those, that would indicate to us that either you've got a very strong draft, which we can actually measure, or something paranormal could have occurred in that area. No paranormal investigator is complete without an artillery of detection equipment. A motion sensor is a pair of devices that we will place facing each other. They then send a, an infrared beam, and if anything then breaks that beam between the two, it will activate an audio alarm. A mini-disc recorder, paranormal investigators use these to try and capture EVP, or electronic voice phenomena. Thomas Edison actually said that you could capture the voices of ghosts on tape. Um, and basically it's been used by numerous paranormal investigators to try and capture something that the human ear can't hear. Thermometers or digital thermometers are all used by paranormal investigators. This is because it's claimed that when a spirit is present, the temperature will actually drop. So we do tend to use thermometers in locations to try and pick up on these big fluctuations in temperature. Chris has his own very important role to play. I see my role at the vigils as being twofold. First of all, if there was any possibility of some kind of genuine paranormal activity, then I really want to be in there, I want to witness it, I want to be able to say that I've seen that with my own eyes and that we've recorded stuff on camera, and, and that would all be incredibly exciting. My secondary role will be to actually look at the way that the other people who were involved in the vigil actually interact with each other. A lot of the kind of experiences that are going to be reported will be down to suggestion. Basically, people kind of getting each other psyched up. And it'll be interesting to see if that is what actually does happen. Mark believes having a sceptic on board will be beneficial to the investigation. There are sceptics out there who are completely closed-minded. No matter what proof we get, it's not paranormal. They will find any sort of rational explanation to fit the bill. There are certain sceptics out there which Chris is one of those who will listen to what you have to say, he will take it on board, and if he doesn't know what it is, he will say he doesn't know what it is. If we could actually prove that paranormal forces really did exist, that would be such a fantastic scientific breakthrough and, and, and such a kind of a contribution to human knowledge and, and helping us to understand our place in the universe and all those big issues, it would be absolutely fantastic. The problem is the evidence just isn't particularly convincing at the moment. Our experts are keen to examine the house, and in particular, Stephen's mysterious photograph. And you were standing here? I was standing yeah. here, yeah. Though I was not reflecting into the mirror whatsoever. The photograph that Stephen's got, I'd, I'd like to um, get that onto a computer and get that blown up and have a, have a really good look. I mean, it'd be, it would be quite confirm? interesting to see if we could actually kind of try and Re you know, just yeah, recreate, recreate that. it. And yeah. if we could, then you've obviously got a much better chance of yeah. figuring out what it might be. Yeah. This is where the ladders were positioned. We wanted Lorraine informs Mark and Chris of the terror on the stairs. We strongly believe that something happens there. The staircase, I'm not a psychic, but I just got the feeling that something was going on there. After Mia and the experts have toured the house, Mia meets the family to discuss her findings. What was interesting for me is that normally it would be a certain room would be the centre, but to me it was a stairway, and uh, everything's coming from the stairway. Who's had the in the bed and it's been touching their face or me? Is it you? Yeah, yeah. but that scares you. It's naughty, you know. It's mm. been naughty. It's that's, not that's trying to hurt anybody. Yeah. 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 The Scrivens run Mia through some of the many hauntings they've experienced. We've had banging footsteps, as if you're going up the stairs. I've had them. like as if somebody's watching me, especially in the bathroom. And even if I'm in my bedroom, the door has to be shut, I can't. So it's the hallway, really? Mm. So it's actually the hallway and the stairs area? Also, I get the urge to run up the stairs, like someone's chasing me up the stairs. Yeah. We've both had that. We've both, we've both had that for Very interesting. Do you get your heart racing as you're going up the stairs? Yeah. When I go in somewhere, one of the reasons I know it's haunted is that 
a certain part of that house, my heart rate would come up. And I was actually decorating the hallway and I had the accident where I came off the plank. You were very lucky. I was... Earlier, I was actually speculating if someone's actually died coming down those stairs. Emma is keen to get Mia's opinion of the decomposing figure by her bed. When an apparition, if it was an apparition, when it's trying to come together to show itself, it's actually trying to put the pieces together. And sometimes it's not doing it well enough or it hasn't got enough energy to come together. What I picked up in your room was that you had been scared yeah, by something by the that's bed. That's why I won't go back in there. As well as the psychic activity in the house, Mia also tells them her findings from the object she previously examined. I was looking at some stuff earlier to do with the psychometry. Yeah. And there's a picture, the picture of the, the lady in the brass. Yeah. That was a lovely, warm feeling coming from her. But she's not haunting you, OK? <laughs> so she'd have come back to say hello, but she's yeah. not haunting you. She wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't take um, to do that. Joke. But with you, it's the, so the lady, this must be your grandmother, she no. is as if you've been very sad. And I, I don't know why you've been sad. You OK, darling? But the sadness is it's, it's going. It's going to move on. It'll be fine. But it's, it's, what I'm getting is new relationships to do with lightening up. Everything's going to be fun. OK? But you have been very lost in your own way. And because of all this going on and all the angst, it can make it more susceptible to be seeing things and experiencing things. It'd be fine. We're sorted. What you've got here is somebody saying, this is mine, I'm scaring you, I don't want you here. I believe somebody still thinks it's their place, and that's what we've got the problem with. Now, it's not evil, it's just a strong presence. Right. Doesn't want to hurt you, it's just trying to get rid of you. Right. You know, right. maybe not very comforting. <laughs> yeah. you know. But the reality is, it's quite easy to, well, hopefully, it should be quite easy to send over. Right. But I'll put it this way, I won't be leaving before it is. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah, we'll hold you to that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely hold you to that. The family are amazed about how much Mia has picked up on about what they claim has been going on in the house. Um, surprised, very shocked that she's got quite a lot right without knowing anything really. Not so sure about the bit where she said it's not. I don't believe her. Where she says it's not sinister and it's you know not out to her. It's that's a hard one to sort of yeah. when you've lived here to so actually think that it's photo, not. And after photo, the photograph, yeah. the photograph doesn't look as if it's not sinister. Lorraine and Emma also inform us of something terrifying they experienced last night. I, halfway through the night, for some reason, I got this feeling I couldn't move my right leg. And I sort of woke up a little bit more and realised I couldn't actually move from sort of my chest down. And it was as if I was physically stuck there. And I tried to think of everything I could except for what was happening. And eventually I went to sleep. And then suddenly I woke up with such a fright because Emma just shouted out my name and grabbed my arm. I just felt like I couldn't breathe. And um, I was really, all my hair was wet. And I got like this cold breeze. It felt like there was, like, as if you rub like a hand gently across the top of your shoulders. That's how it felt. And then I started panicking and trying to cover myself up. But it was the, the hot, the hot, it was so that... hot. Really, really, really hot, and we were both ringing soaking wet. I think if there wasn't a vigil tonight, I'd really be worried about going to bed. I, um, think, I think it's a nice feeling that you'd have Mia here as well, and she'd help you through it. Um, yeah, it's but I'd feel uncomfortable if she wasn't here. Yeah. Mia is quite concerned that this spectre is not about to give up trying to force them out of the house. It's very oppressive, the presence, and it's not something that... Um, could possibly be, be left with, and it would certainly affect the family badly. But also, I didn't want to scare the family or wind them up when I was talking to them. Will the photograph hold the answer as to who this sinister man is and what he's got against the family? This is the original photograph. Having examined the digital picture, Mark shows Chris his findings. Now, I'm going to tell you what I can see a face here. You're basically saying that that's a face there... Yes. ..and this is some kind of... Cowl or cloak cowl. or something. Cowl. It, it's yeah. certainly a black shape right. that I can't explain. I cannot replicate this this photograph. The fact that we've just got it in the bottom corner of the mirror suggests that, you know, we are looking at a reflection of something yes. that was there in the room. For me, that's a very, very good photograph. While the photograph has the experts perplexed, Chris does have a scientific theory that may explain Lorraine's terrifying experience. I mean, there's, a, there's a, something called sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. And 
it's exactly as you just described it. And probably, I imagine, mm -hmm. quite understandably, you felt quite scared I while there's all this was happening. Was the, yeah. I was going to say, with everything yeah. else that's gone on, I was last night, that was the most scared right. I've ever actually felt, to be honest with you. I mean, I mean, this thing, sleep paralysis, is, is something, you know, there is a kind of scientific literature on it, mm -hmm. and we don't fully understand what's going on, but what seems to be happening is... It's, it's almost like your, your, your brain is in that state that it's normally in when you're dreaming. And we know that when you're in that state, that the muscles of your body are literally paralysed and are presumably to stop you acting out the actions of the dream. But in this situation where, where it happens, in the way that you experienced it, it's actually kind of coming through into wakefulness. And so you're yeah. becoming aware of the fact you can't move. And, mm -hmm. and again, you know, it, it's quite a common experience. About 40% of the population will experience it at least once in their lives. Right. After talking to the family, the next stage of our investigation can begin. In a vigil, our three experts will spend the night with the Scrivens family in their home in an attempt to find proof of paranormal activity. Our investigator, Mark Webb, has all the latest technology to record hard evidence of a ghost. Meanwhile, Mia says she's more concerned for the family. She wants to know why a spirit is intimidating them so intensely. And our psychologists and sceptic Dr Chris French will be on hand all night as well. He says he's determined to offer a logical explanation to anything that might happen during the night. Mia and the experts discuss the best way to proceed. They talk about the equipment that Mark should use and where they're most likely to capture the sound or image of a ghost. So this one's been designed to pick up on any sounds that have been made that we wouldn't hear. I'm not convinced that we could ever, just on the basis of this kind of apparatus, say that's something paranormal happening. I could be levitating around this room and you'd be saying it's not paranormal. No, that I would say was paranormal. <laughs> In spite of Chris's criticisms, Mark still sets up his high-tech equipment around the house. These are motion detectors. Should anyone break the beam of these, it will set off an alarm. In addition to his usual equipment, there's also a thermal imaging camera. The camera is able to detect variation in temperature, which may indicate paranormal activity. Outside the house, in a Winnebago set up to monitor the vigil, skeptic Chris watches the proceedings carefully. For tonight's vigil, static cameras are set up in the various rooms around the house. Mia and Lorraine take their positions in Lorraine's bedroom. Emma's petrified of being alone in her room. She insists that family friend Steve must stay with her. Accompanied by Mark, Stephen takes up position in what they believe to be centre of the paranormal activity, the stairwell. With everyone in position and all the equipment up and running, the house is plunged into darkness at precisely midnight. There's a feeling of anticipation in the air. Emma has been in her room for 31 minutes now. I've got a sicky feeling. I know my mouth's gone dry and I feel a bit faint. In Lorraine's room, they claim to experience something unusual. It's really strange because as I'm looking that way, you can see it getting dark and I look round, but the lights are there. Yeah. Keep notice that. They both appear to be seeing a dark shadow in the door. All I can see is that side of the door frame. There's like a black shadow that comes across. Yeah, yeah, I can see it going in. Stephen is now alone as Mark has gone to check his equipment. Since the light's been turned off, the only thing that I've really noticed is sun changes in temperature. One minute it's really hot. The next is goes really chilly. Meanwhile, in Lorraine's room, their eyes are drawn to the doorway. Is the evil presence roaming the house? Did you see it change shape? Yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Okay. Yeah. I am petrified. In fact, I'm having trouble controlling the shakes. Really. Yeah. Lorraine's not the only person feeling uncomfortable. Emma also changes places next door. 
Meanwhile, Stephen is now listening to one of Mark's devices in the dining room. You can hear it. It's like a proper growl. It's like a deep belly growl. There's something else, I can't quite work it out. Did you see Elijah as well? Lorraine and Mia think that they've seen the shadow disappear through the door. It was like um, something in the top left hand corner and it went sort of across that way. Mia goes to the landing to investigate. I'll stand there for a second and see if we both see it again. The thermal imaging camera flashes pink, showing a fluctuation in temperature. Can you see anything yet? Alone in the room, Lorraine is terrified as she sees the shadow return. I saw it. No, I can't see it. It's not happening when I'm out here. Mm. Come back in. Suddenly, Steve says he feels unwell. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sickness may be a sign of paranormal activity. Mum, somebody. Yeah. Uncle Steve. Yeah. He's not feeling very well. So, can somebody go to the back bedroom, please? Can somebody? Yeah. Can somebody quickly go to the back bedroom, please? Back, back bedroom. bedroom. Back bedroom. He's not feeling very well. Despite claims of being unwell, Steve refuses to leave Emma's side. <sighs> Emma seems completely traumatised by being back in her bedroom and the pressure is taking its toll. As soon as I sat down here, which is where I had this this dream or whatever it was before, I had this cold, just down this one side, this cold chill. You know, that sometimes you get that feeling, like the old side, somebody's just stepped over your grave. Lorraine and Mia are convinced that they saw the dreaded shadow enter Emma's room. I'm not being funny, but that's the way that thing went. I've gone cold. I can feel you're cold. I've gone cold. Things are getting so tense in the house, the family ask to leave after only 50 minutes. Mia and Lorraine try to convince Chris about what they've seen. It wasn't just like a, like a mm. cloud or shadow. It was like mist, but really very big particles. So visible particles. That was not imagination. So then we had to move places because she was on the outside. And by the time the whole bed was shaking, she was shaking so much. <laughs> but from my point of view, that was amazing. Lorraine through. suggests that the experts go back to the bedroom. I want to go in there and, uh, you know, see, see if we can all see something happening in there. Are you on there, man? The others take refuge in the Winnebago. I think she's quite scared. She's looking very, very drained. Like Mia's picking something up. My heart rate's just started to go up. I just see something from the corner of the door go down. Mine doesn't look well. Yeah. The tension in the room seems to be taking its toll on the rain. I think it's gone like a step too far for Mum. She was all right with it before. Over the last few minutes, I've started to get that intense like pressure on top of my head again. Pick it up, she's struggling. She looks like she's struggling like that, yeah. Lorraine says she's physically and emotionally exhausted. So they decide to end the vigil. The vigil seems to have had a dramatic effect on Lorraine. OK. Mm. It's not a headache, it's just... Not a lot of pressure or something. Mm. Mark, intrigued by the fluctuation in the temperature, decides to investigate immediately. The temperature's dropping. It's still dropping to 24 degrees. I sense, I don't know, I don't know what, why my head started. I mean, it's still not right now, but in that bedroom, it was just as if it was, yeah. It wasn't banging, it was just like it was being squashed. This room f feels physically colder, yet the temperature is, is rising. It's 23.4, 23.5. 
The thermal imaging camera supports Mark's findings about the temperature changes. Back out on the landing, temperature's dropping 23.9, 23.8. It's quite bizarre. As the night of the vigil draws to a close, it seems that most of the group believe there is a presence in the house. In the cold light of day, Mia and the family reflect on the vigil. I just can't explain the experience. It was... I'll never forget it. It frightened the life out of me, but I'll never forget what I saw. Lorraine tries to make sense of what went on by telling Emma and Stephen. But I was amazed that within seconds of us seeing it go in your direction, you shouted and says, can somebody come in with, you know, something wrong? Until we actually, I start the clearing, we won't actually know the identity of it. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one we've got to get rid of. Have last night's events altered the skeptics' views? I personally didn't experience anything that suggested to me that there was any anything paranormal happening whatsoever. And I think what was happening was that we were we were all pretty much seeing more or less what we expected to see. It's been a long night for everyone, but for Emma and Lorraine, it's been particularly harrowing. Lorraine and Mia both claim to have seen a dark shape on the landing that then moved into Emma's bedroom. Lorraine became very emotional. And Steve, the skeptic of the group, complained of feeling unwell. Meanwhile, downstairs, Mark Webb, our paranormal investigator, observed changes in temperature, changes that were also recorded by our thermal imaging camera. Our psychologist, Chris French, though, is unimpressed by any of that. He doesn't think that any of it amounts to hard evidence of a haunting. But with the family and the majority of the investigation team believing that there is something supernatural in the house, Mia prepares to confront the ghost. Stories of demons, ghosts and evil possession stretch right back through history. And in all that time, various methods have been used to get rid of them. It's no surprise that most people aren't prepared to live with a ghost in their homes for very long. Mia believes that when a spirit is detected, it has to be helped to the other side. She says they simply don't belong in this world, they belong in the spirit world and need help to get there. But even she can't predict what could happen. Now, as you know, last night we did the vigil. Tonight we get rid of it. Now, during the course of this, you may have some strange experiences. Bear with me. Got it. It's coming down the stairs. It's a man. Not of this time. We're going back quite a way. Um, wearing like a, a cloak or robe, long. There's some uh, damage to the side of his face. So he's either hurt his face or his neck or. This is how he would have died. Not from this house, OK? From this area, not from this house. You're a bit easy pickings. That's why you're attracted here. Not always here, either, but this is the main place that he's been coming to. There's an Irish connection with him. But he worked on, on the, an estate, uh, on for others around here. It is not an entity. It is a person. <sighs> very bad-tempered. Very angry. I'm trying to ask him why he wants to frighten you. I'm not really getting a response. It's more just because he can. Now I've got him, he's not talking to me. I'm only getting the images. He's stepping back away from me now. He won't talk to me. He's coming into the room now. He's angry, but it's not with you. It's just that he can see you, he can communicate. 
in ways with you that other people can't. But he wants to go over. My hairs are starting to grow up now. He want, does want to go over. It's not going to be that much, hopefully, of a problem. I'm going to send him over, OK? Mia appears to be in a trance. She says a special clearing prayer. De profundus clamave ad de domini, domini exordi vocium. Me arm fiant oris tu incendentis invocium de capitonis miae. Mia says the spirit has now dispersed. I am shaking, I don't normally shake. That's not shaking because I'm scared. Mm. That's because my heart rate was going and I could have, it was on my chest. Is your head OK? It's just gone. It's just gone? It's like, poof! The environment's calming down now. I'm calming down. That's not fear, that's just energy. The, it wasn't evil. He's been around for a long time. You're not the only home he's been to. Drawn to you because you're all sensitive and easy to sort of really communicate, but he was very angry. So he was either murdered or killed, but it was very quick. Gone. Finished. Benito. You'll sleep better tonight. All done. Mia claims that during the clearing, the ghost actually spoke directly to her. He told her he was haunting the Scrivens because he was angry. He died unexpectedly and wasn't yet ready to move on to the next world. Well, without a name, of course, it was very difficult to research that story. But despite that, for their part, the Scrivens believed what Mia told them. The Scriven family believe their home has been haunted for nearly 20 years. She actually woke me up screaming. It used to get to the point where I was going to freeze fright and couldn't move. I was shouting, but no words were coming out. They feel the cause of their torment has been a menacing spirit. His face looks like it's really badly decomposed. They even believe they have photographic evidence. It was this dark, shadowy thing. I can see a face here. With the support of our experts, the Scriven family have attempted to confront their tormentor and rid their home of him. Down the stairs. Has Mia's clearing worked? It's been two months since the clearing. We've returned to the Scrivens' home to find out if Mia successfully removed the menacing presence. There is just no question that whatever was here, it's definitely been sent on its way. Definitely not a sign of anything. It does feel a lot different, and. We all know that it's all, it's gone and hopefully it's never going to come back. They believe the change has had a positive impact. Everybody's so chilled. There's no hostility or tension. My sister is happy and that makes my relationship with her happy because she's comfortable in the house. But is Emma now capable of sleeping in her own room? The first night was hard to get back into my room because it was like my subconscious telling me, oh, it's still here. But after that, just come in as if nothing's ever happened. And I just think it's so nice that I can do that now in my own house. And Lorraine feels like a new woman. I now feel not so tired due to being able to sleep properly overnight. Just revitalised, full of energy. It's been a long time since I felt full of energy. Thanks to Mia, the Scrivens have been given a fresh start. After all these years, it's such a wonderful feeling to actually think that our house is now our house and we are not sharing it with somebody else. I'd like to thank Mia from the bottom of our hearts for all that she did do. Um, it just means so much to us after living with it for so long and it's just changed our lives completely. I just don't know. Words just wouldn't express how grateful that we really are to her. Lorraine Scriven says her family is now rid of the dark figure that she believes her son Stephen photographed in that mirror. 
And as for Emma, well, she's now back in her bedroom, no longer fearful that she'll be sleeping with a spectre hovering over her. So, thankfully, one happy family, and maybe a ghost that's been moved on to where it belongs. Perhaps haunted homes are more than just the stuff of films and fiction. And if you believe tonight's family, then the nightmare of living with an unwanted guest could happen to just about anyone. Sleep well. Good night. <laughs>